It is March 17 and I am at the Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument. There's a fabulous campground here and lots of trails. So I will be showing you every trail possible, I hope, on what there is to do here. This first trail that I'm on is called the Palo Verde Trail and it's from the campground to the visitor center and it's like 1.1 miles one way. There's a big group of organ pipes. I would love to hear the music that they make. I am certainly learning my cacti. And this one is the Acutillo and it's in bloom. These trees with the green bark, that's the Palo Verde. The brittle bush is so brilliant. This has been on my radar for quite a while. I've been studying maps and everything and dreaming of coming here. And now I finally get to be here. There's a nice little trail at the visitor center now that I'm gonna go on. It's an interpretive trail. A tall saguaro can be over 150 years old and a tall organ pipe cacti can be 100 years old. This is a saguaro skeleton and it's pretty hard. It's amazing. I learned something very interesting. Most cacti start their existence under a nurse tree or plant. And now I'm seeing it everywhere. This barrel cactus is by another shrub. And then it competes for the water of the shrub or tree and that tree dies and the cactus takes over. So see how nurses give their lives for others. This national monument borders Mexico and so there's a lot of fugitives that try to get through. The visitor center was named for a ranger and border patrol guy that was fighting off the bad guys and he got shot and killed. So we're supposed to keep our eyes out for any unusual activities around here. That happened in 2002 and they've really beefed up security and such around here. So that's comforting. But anyway, I'm loving my time here. It's gorgeous. Another name for the Ocotillo is Candlewood. There's different varieties of Choya, but this one is called Teddy Bear Choya. And it is, you don't want to touch it you need to stay far away from it. It is similar to our burdock that we have back home. It'll latch onto you and really penetrate you and can cause infections as well. So no touching. I believe I'm watching out for snakes as I go along. <laughs> oh man. After eating some lunch, I decided to do the Ajo Mountain Drive. It's a 21 mile loop drive. The Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument is the heart of the Sonoran Desert. This desert covers 110,000 square miles, an area about the size of the state of New Mexico. The Sonoran Desert is the most diverse desert in North America, home to over 4,000 species of plants and animals. Why is this place so diverse? What makes this desert different from the Great Basin Desert to the north, the Mojave to the west, or the Chihuahuan to our east? Many factors make the Sonoran Desert unique. The winters are mostly frost-free, and there are two rainfall periods, one in winter-spring and another in July and August. The high mountain ranges affect how much rain falls in an area, creating a diversity of habitats for specially adapted plants and animals to thrive. 
Everything seems to be related or connected to something else in complex ways. Most animals that live here are either nocturnal or crepuscular to thwart the high daytime temperatures. These adaptations, along with many more, allow the Sonoran Desert life to thrive. Decorating the landscape of the Sonoran Desert is the creosote bush. This olive green shrub is one of the most drought tolerant plants in North America. Long after the soil is too dry for most species, creosote still manages to absorb water. Its adaptations allow it to survive without water for two years before completely dying. You would think that the saguaro cactus, which dominates the landscape, would be one of those well-adapted hardy desert species. It is certainly the tallest and largest cactus in the United States, growing as high as 50 feet and weighing several tons. In Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument, we think that these cacti flower for the first time at approximately 65 years of age and might produce their first arms at around 90. Of course, there is no way to know exactly how old a saguaro is. It doesn't create growth rings like a tree. What we know comes from averaging data from hundreds of cacti all across the Sonoran Desert. Cacti living in washes over by Tucson, where the water is more abundant, grow faster. Cacti growing in the valley flats, where water is scarce, can live their whole lives and never have the resources to support arm growth. A saguaro is entirely dependent on location and rainfall, as well as the ability of its shallow roots to suck up as much rain as possible to store in its spongy flesh. Even with all the saguaro's adaptations to capture and conserve water, without the help of other species it would not survive here at all. It needs animals to pollinate and spread the seeds, and the assistance of other plant species to shelter young seedlings during the first fragile years of their lives. This park was established in 1937 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt and protects most of the natural habitat of the Oregon pipe cactus within the United States. While commonly found in the southern sections of the Sonoran Desert, these cacti are rare north of the U.S.-Mexico border, but have adapted to life in the monument. Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument experiences only a few frosty nights a year, allowing the cacti to stay warm and flourish like their Mexican neighbors. Oregon Pipe Cacti crave the sun's heat and do not require nurse plants. At night, the rocks surrounding the plant release heat stored during the day, thus keeping the plants from freezing. Many species of prickly pear cacti are familiar to travelers because prickly pear grows naturally throughout most of the western hemisphere. Abundant on the surrounding slopes is Engelmann prickly pear, the most common prickly pear species in the monument. Yellow flowers bloom along the edges of the flat pads from April through June. Deep purple fruits, called tunas, are an important food in many parts of Mexico and among Native Americans. The flat pads are modified stems functioning in the place of leaves. The prickly pear has adapted to the desert by keeping its pads straight up and thus only receiving sun on its edges, preventing sunburn under the harsh noon sun. These cacti are very important to sustaining animals in the desert. They provide food for the javelina who, like goats, will eat anything. Tortoise love to eat the fruit. Prickly pear cacti prove useful to humans too. The new pads or nopalis are filled with juices and may be picked to make a great salad or a bittersweet jelly. Off of this Ajo Loop Trail is an Arch Canyon Trail for pedestrians. So I'm going to take it and see what we find. It's 0.6 of a mile one way, so that's doable. Well, would you look at that? There are the arches. You can see the big one, but there's a tiny one up there as well. So pretty. I love California poppies. I love these steps they made. These look like onions, but they don't smell like them. So, wonder what they are.
On my drive here, a wild cat ran in front of my car. I didn't have time to grab my camera, of course, but man, that was so cool. I can only imagine what it was. Well, this is the end of the trail for me, <laughs> but isn't this spectacular? It's too late in the day to risk going anymore. And plus there's this sign back here that makes me nervous. This is very real around here. Gorgeous wilderness. So ends this 21 mile loop. It was very lovely. I missed out on a hike though because time got the better of me. And so ends this video and I will see you in my next one. Assalamu alaikum, shalom, peace. And remember that with this virus going around, it's just another sign that Jesus is coming soon.